The Institute of Bioengineering is unique at EPFL because it consists of scientists from engineering as well as scientists from life sciences. It's fertile ground for something like open hardware. The Institute of Bioengineering has as its core mission statement to be able to do cutting edge engineering and biological discovery in a way that contributes both to fundamental research and also to applications and innovation into society. What we're really excited about now is the development of open hardware. And this fits in with education because we get students to learn how to make the instruments. It fits in with research because we put cutting edge research instruments into laboratories which they wouldn't otherwise be and so new science can be done. And I think it's a really interesting take on innovation because typically you might think about innovation as getting into a commercial company or something like that. But this is a way that shortcuts some of the delays involved in going through a typical commercialization route and it enriches the scientific community. It's a very direct way of translating research into, into changes in the community that matter. We were trying to find ways to bring our instruments into the hands of more people that then have particular research topics where those instruments can really make a difference and really lead to new discoveries, help other people adopt our technology. So what we decided to do is we organize workshops where we invite people from other universities to come and participate. They learn how to put together these instruments out of pre-prepared parts that we prepare. And during the workshop, they are learning the basics of instrument building, how to put the instrument together, how to test it, how to use it, how to maintain it. At the end of the workshop, they take this instrument home to their laboratories and perform their own research with it. So essentially what we do in our lab, we have three different types of workshop. They all uh, are part of this AFM technology, but they involve different components of the system. So one of them, for example, the main uh, workshop that we host is a workshop based on the atomic force microscope head. This is essentially the heart of the instrument. I think for me, the most interesting part of this workshop is actually to meet people from all over the world, people who are working using the same instrument, but obviously the applications are so diverse and it's great to learn what they're doing. It is a, it's a good platform to meet other people, to collaborate with other laboratories, and uh, it is a solid foundation for both collaborations and getting citations of your own work. I came to an, the Open High Speed AFM workshop here a few years ago. Uh, it was a really brilliant experience. We came straight off the back of a conference and then we came to EPFL for about a week's building and making of the high-speed AFM. So the whole immersive experience of the workshop was really brilliant because it not only gave us an idea into how they were made, it was how we might fix them if they break, if there's something that we think might need to be adapted for our needs, what bits and what avenues we might need to go down. I think open hardware's an incredible Thing. I think open hardware and open software and I think the future of open hardware and open software in our field will allow lots of different labs working in this sort of technological field to work on more diverse biological problems together. What uh, I'm working on are these uh, tiny uh, organelles which we have in every cell which are centrioles which needs to duplicate uh, once and only once per cell cell cycle and I think this without open hardware would have been uh, much harder because of course you don't know what uh, is where, what uh, the machine is doing, well, like this. So at EPFL I am building uh, optical microscopes. The OpenSIM is a structured illumination microscope based on the projection of a grid pattern on the sample. And using this principle you can get super resolution uh, on biological fluorescent samples. What we are doing now is starting to share it with other labs within EPFL. Um, my, my hope for the future of the OpenSIM project is that more and more people will get involved, uh, both engineers to participate in the development and improve it, and also biologists to use it for their own research. One of our four main strategic aims for the next five to ten years is to push the idea of open hardware. And this fits in with our strengths in instrument development as well as in biological measurement. So it's really important, it's right, it's right at the top of our priorities as an institute. I think there are a number of things that would help uh, in the promotion of open hardware. Some of them obvious, like having space and time to be able to do these projects. Some quite modest uh, startup funding is, is already good. One 
thing that's a little less obvious is that we need to evaluate projects like open hardware uh, positively in terms of innovation when we're evaluating young labs and their contribution to the community and to society. So open science is emerging as the future for academic research and many funding agencies are actually starting to mandate that the research results that are obtained uh, at universities are being made available freely to the scientific community and the general public. For us, what's really important is that the technology that we develop actually later makes an impact not just within our lab in terms of improving measurement science, but also makes an impact in the broader scientific field, really enabling new discoveries and doing that in an efficient manner.